Shalom. Giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachahakurash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to respond to this video that was uploaded, all right, by the elder brother Karata Zaba, all right, head of the GMS Baltimore branch, all right, and this is one of his pages, The Real Apologias. Subscribe and be edified, all right, and whenever you need particular topics, all right, which is so much going on, all right, you shouldn't be lacking in topics, but you go to this brother's page, all right, he doesn't miss anything, <laughs> All right, so uh, the water Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai for putting the spirit, you know, on particular brothers, all right, to constantly find things. Now, this video he uh, loaded, as you can see, you see uh, this guy, Alan Parr, which, if you don't know who he is, he's a proponent of Christianity, all right, and as you're going to see in this video, he's a proponent, all right, for the people who are currently in the Holy Land calling themselves the Chosen. All right, now, if you aren't uh, familiar with him, okay, here you go here. You see a discussion about the black Hebrew Israelites. All right, he has a page. Um, he's the one who had, uh, you know, questions for Israelites, which we answer those. But, um... You can see him here. What's up with the black Hebrew Israelites? So he's um, ultimately a Sambo, right? You just got to call it like it is, um, who comes up against what he calls the black Hebrew Israelites, which is no such thing, all right? And there's other videos as well. But you see, he mocks us, comes up against us, but Look at the smile he has on his face with E, who calls themselves the chosen. Now, the title of this video is Response, How Israel is Fulfilling End Time Biblical Prophecy Explained. All right. Now, we constantly go into the prophecies of how the Israelites would return to that land. All right. And it does not add up with the way. All right. These particular people went back to that land all right and um that's going to be brought out in this video so i'm going to play this and watch this guy uh do his tap dancing and, and smiling for massa and just look at the smile on his face he's just so happy to be in the presence of such greatness all right because what the christians in particular the black christians teach is that those are the jews and we are the gentiles you see, which they don't have any understanding, which we were in the Gentile state. All right. But we are the Israelites. And in the scriptures, the Bible is tracking the chosen seed from Adam through Seth, through Noah, through Shem, through our facts, all the way up to Abraham. Who a promise was made to. All right. Of a particular land of a particular chosen allotted land that was promised to him and his descendants who will be as the sand of the sea that promise was passed down to isaac and through isaac who had jacob and esau the promise went to jacob all right and then that lot that promise fell upon the 12 sons of jacob who would be in large numbers a, a multitude all right in the latter days all right, but a remnant will return to be heirs to the promise of that land. Okay? So when the kingdom of heaven is established, it's going to start in that particular land that was promised unto Abraham. And that happens to be the land that Adam and the sons of God were kicked out of. The promised land. The land was Solomon ruled out of for 40 years. All right. And since Solomon's reign. All right. The true Israelites, the true biblical Israelites have not had a sovereign government. OK. The next time the true biblical Israelites would have a sovereign government 
where all 12 tribes will be together is promised, all right, in the latter days after a miraculous second return of who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ to gather together the remnant elect, all right, from the four corners of the earth, in particular Babylon the Great, which is America, all right, and ultimately, once it's all said and done, New Jerusalem will come down, all right, and we will return to that chosen land, which according to prophecy, all right, there's going to be a big destruction in that land, and we're going to clean it up, all right, via you heathen, all right, but that's a whole nother lesson for a whole nother time. But I say all of that to say this, the people who are currently in that land are there based upon the premise that they are the rightful heirs to that land, meaning them returning there is a fulfillment of biblical prophecy of the true Israelites returning to that land, which does not match up with biblical prophecy. One of the, the, the easiest ways to know that it doesn't link up with biblical prophecy is the fact that war is still going on in the earth. OK, and when the chosen people return to that land, OK, the standard of the earth will be the law, statutes and commandments. That's what will be taught worldwide. All right. Also, you wouldn't have any other religions. OK, when you look over there right now, it's a split between Islam, Christianity and then this thing, Judaism, which is all confusion. And when you get to the nitty gritty, the people over there, they don't even believe in the Messiah and they follow the Talmud. Now, with all of these discrepancies, look at the smile on his face. But when he when it comes to the, the, the true Israelites waking up. Look, look at look at look at look at his look. Basically, hmm, how are these the Israelites? But when he's in front of Massa, look at the smile on his face. So we're going to play this and let's get some edification. Point of the future of my nation, because, you know, Israel is a miracle. No matter how you can look at it, there is no logical explanation to the rebirth of a nation after 2000 years of being away from its land the rebirth of a language that was not being spoken anywhere the re rebirth of of a land that was a barren wasteland you know you hear this now we get questioned about the lashawan kwadash but then they are are over there speaking yiddish <laughs> which is, you know, the, the broken Hebrew with added vowel points mixed with German. It's, it's, it's rhetoric. It's, it's madness. But not one question goes to these people. And look at how sure he is that these are the people when it comes to them. Look at them. That's why the scriptures say, is, is Israel a servant? Is he a home-born slave? Why is he spoiled? Now you see why the Heavenly Father is getting ready to put and unleash so much hell on our people, man. Mainly you Christians, because you're a big part of the confusion that perpetuates the uh, in our people's minds, man. <laughs> this is absolutely crazy. So Mark Twain shows up in the middle of the 1800s to Israel, and he writes that even the cactus, which is a great friend of the desert, did not live there. Big moment. 4 p.m. Now, what the beloved uh, brother is going to play here, I rewind it a little bit, is how they got that land. Okay? And you tell me, does it align up with biblical prophecy? Friend of the desert did not live there. Big moment. 4 p.m. Rothschild Boulevard. David Ben-Gurion officially declaring Israel an independent state. The Jews finally have a home. His talk is... Now, real quick, vocab's big issue with us is us saying that we're the biblical descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But that's what they're saying as they went back to the land. That's why they're there. Because there was a promise given... All right. Unto Abraham. All right. Passed through Isaac, through Jacob. All right. That his descendants down the line will be rightful heirs to that land. 
So they're over there rape, robbing, and murdering, slaughtering. Based upon that premise, and no one is saying anything. And this is how, this is the, 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 the declaration that ultimately substantiated it, which is not biblical. The Balfour Declaration. Did not live there. Big moment. 4 p.m. Rothschild Boulevard, David Ben-Gurion officially declaring Israel an independent state. The Jews finally have a home. His talk is pretty nationalistic and very thoughtful. He stresses on points like the state of Israel would strive to develop the land for the good of all its residents, be based upon foundations of liberty, justice, and peace, and that Israel would ensure social and political rights to all citizens without discrimination of religion, race, or sex. But... Now, is that ultimately how... It was supposed to be when the true Israelites returned to that land that you can practice any religion. Let's get the book of Micah, the fourth chapter. In the first verse, it says, but in the last days, it shall come to pass that the mountain, the government of the house of Yahweh shall be established in the top of the mountains. And it shall be exalted above the hills and people shall flow into it. Okay. And when you get Daniel, the uh, second chapter, as a matter of fact, let's get that. Daniel, the second chapter, you know, after the revival of the fourth beast reigns and it's destroyed. OK, this is the divine kingdom that's coming. Daniel 2 and 44. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. Okay. That's the kingdom of heaven. All right. It's going to be on top of all of the other kingdoms. And the beauty of it is that as you read here in verse two, when that kingdom is established, that's the mountain. Okay. It says in verse two in Micah four, and many nations shall come and say, come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, Yahweh, and to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways and we shall walk in his paths. Not we're going to uh, uh, establish our own religion and do our own thing. No, for the law shall go forth of Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. OK, verse three. And he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, meaning you're not going to be warring anymore. You're going to get rid of your weapons and you're going to pick up the plowshare and be a slave, a servant. In their spears, weapons into pruning hooks. Okay. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. Since 1948, how many wars have taken place? In fact, the night. <laughs> you can just uh, look it up. All right, but that very night. When they proclaim the state, that's another thing. What prophecy says that there will be a state of Yasha Allah? Hmm? No, the, the prophecy talks about the throne of David being established. Okay. A sovereign government. All right. Under Yahweh Shai. All right. And King David and the rest of the 12 being the first 12 kings and then the rest of the 144,000. See? But see, when you disregard prophecy and establish your own righteousness as Christianity boldly does through Edomite supremacy, then it doesn't matter. These things don't matter. It says in the distance, the night this happened. In the distance, the rumble of guns could be heard from fighting that broke out between these people and the Arabs 
Immediately following the British Army withdrawal earlier that day, Egypt launched an air assault against these uh, small hats that evening. So you could read up on that history all you want. So that's number one. And we're going to continuously bring out this point. You can't get around it. And Yahweh Shai himself told you in John 10, the scripture cannot be broken. You can't take these prophecies away and then sign some sort of agreement that gives you rights to the land and say that now that's the biblical fulfillment of prophecy of us getting to that land. No. All right. Hell no. It's going to be a miraculous second coming before the true uh, 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 Israelites return to that land. As a matter of fact, let's get Baruch, the second chapter. Because we were scattered. Baruch 2 and 29. If you will not hear my voice, surely this great multitude shall be turned into a small number among the heathen, among the nations, whether I will scatter them. And that's a result of a curse. Deuteronomy 28 and 64. We will be scattered. For I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stiff necked people. But in the land of their captivity, they shall remember themselves and shall know that I am the Lord their God. For I will give them in heart and ears to hear. And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think upon my name. And that will be because the Lord will send prophets out and return from their stiff neck and from their wicked deeds. For they shall remember the way of their fathers, which sinned before the Lord. And I will bring them again into the land which I promised with an oath unto their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they shall be lords of it. And I will increase them, and they shall not be diminished. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them to be their God, and they shall be my people. And I will no more drive my people Israel out of the land that I have given them. Okay, where is the, the, the Balfour Declaration? Where? No. It's not in there. Did any of that happen? See, Palestine after World War I was under British control and was seeing a series of violent outbreaks between the Arabs and Jews. And to resolve that, the UN proposed a partition plan which would divide the land into two states. Jewish Israel and Arab Palestine while keeping Jerusalem a UN controlled so going back here let's listen to this again and it's very interesting that it's the state all right the state of Israel all right so what government makes it sovereign well according to the holy scriptures all right it will be the throne of David that will be established Okay, once the true biblical Israelites return there. We have the scriptures to back it up. Let's listen to this again. Moment. 4 p.m. Rothschild Boulevard, David Ben-Gurion officially declaring Israel an independent state. The Jews finally have a home. His talk is pretty nationalistic and very thoughtful. He stresses on points like the state of Israel would strive to develop the land for the good of all its residents, be based upon foundations of liberty, justice, and peace. And once the true Israelites return there, all right, it's that's going to pretty much be the premise of how the whole earth is dictated. Okay. Now, we are going to part inheritance amongst the 12 tribes in that land. All right. Under the second Adam, Hamashiach, Yahweh because that's ultimately the Garden of Eden, you know, uh, the Garden East and Eden. OK. But what the hell are they talking about? OK. The state, when, when we return to that land, ultimately, that's going to be uh, uh a catalyst to how the whole earth will be changed into righteousness. And that Israel would ensure social and political rights to all citizens without discrimination of religion, race, or sex. But did any of that happen? 
See, Palestine after World War I was under British control and was seeing a series of violent outbreaks between the Arabs and Jews. And to resolve that, the UN proposed a partition plan which would divide the land into two states, Jewish Israel and Arab Palestine, while keeping Jerusalem a UN-controlled international zone. The votes came in. 33 countries approved, 13 countries voted against it, while 10 completely abstained from voting. And although the Arab states walked out as a form of protest, the partition plan was adopted. On the ground, tensions were high, and they continued to escalate with the massacre at Deir Yassin. This started the mass exodus of Palestinians, while, while Jewish immigration, which was encouraged by the Zionists, was on the rise. That's when the UN intervened with a four-week ceasefire, which worked in favor of Israel. Ignoring the UN arms embargo, Israel imported heavy armaments from Czechoslovakia and used the time to reorganize. This brings us to a turning point in the history of the war. As soon as the ceasefire was over, Israel launched a counter-offensive, occupying two strategic Arab towns, which more war were allocated to Arab Palestine by the UN. 70,000 Palestinians who lived there were forced to flee. What did the... Uh, what about pray for Palestine? Never hear that. The first Arab-Israeli war bring. An Egyptian military presence in the Gaza Strip, and Jordan was gifted the West Bank as a token for its loyalty to Britain and the Zionists. Meanwhile, 700,000 Palestinians were driven out of their homeland. 700,000. Up until this day, it's even more. It's in the millions. But that's cool. But we stand on a corner and say we're Israelites and everybody wants to question every damn thing. And th this ain't they homeland either. As a matter of fact, Let's get prophecy here real quick in the book of Luke. All right. 21 and 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. This happened in 70 AD when the Romans, all right, sacked Jerusalem. Pretty much uh, the millions of Jews fled into the interiors of Africa. All right. For prophecy's sake. But since then. We as a nation have not been together in that land. See, the last true government of the biblical Israelites was under David and Solomon. Okay, for 40 years under Solomon. All right, since then, you've had particular kings who sat on the throne. You know, you can read that in the book, you know, of the kings and all of that. Chronicles, you know. But, um, you know, we went into various captivities, the Assyrian Babylonian, where the heathen, you know, pretty much had dominion over who sits on the throne. You know, we were pretty much vassals then under the Persians. In the Medes, we rebuilt the temple that the Babylonians sacked. OK, and then the Greeks came in, they, they destroyed the temple and did their wickedness. Then the Romans came in and eventually the temple was 100 percent sacked. Then we were what? We, we were led away captive. OK, prophecy had to be fulfilled for us to be brought over here into Babylon the Great. And what will be happening? And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And we're living at the time where the time of the Gentiles shall be fulfilled. So who's over in the Holy Land? All right. Not the actual Israelites. OK, there's actual heathen over there. Let's get the book of Isaiah. 63. We've only possessed that land as a nation for a little time. This is. Uh, Isaiah 63 and 17. Oh, Yahweh, why hast thou made us to err from thy ways? And harden our heart from thy fear. Return for thy servants' sakes the tribes of thine inheritance, the Israelites. The people of thy holiness have possessed it but a little while. Our adversaries have trodden down thy sanctuary. Okay? We are thine, thou never bearest rule over them. They were not called by thy name. 
So Jerusalem will be trodden down of heathen until the time of the actual heathen, the actual Gentiles, not Israelites in a Gentile state of mind. All right. See, Jerusalem will not be in control by the actual Israelites until Yahweh shall return to return them to that land. And that's prophecy. See, that's when you go to Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. We went we went from dry bones to the prophets coming and preaching to being raised up. OK, and what ultimately is the Lord going to do? As you keep reading the reunion of Judah and Israel. Okay, which over there is just the the the, the JEWs. Well, what about the Northern Kingdom? So once the tribes would come together through a great awakening, okay, the remnant, what is the Lord gonna do? In verse twenty one, Ezekiel thirty seven and twenty one, say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whether they be gone, and I will gather them on every side. And bring them into their own land. And how will they be gathered? According to the Holy Scriptures, it would be through being called up, beamed up. Okay? That's how we would be gathered. We wouldn't be gathered by getting on airplanes or driving. You know? No. We would, we would be gathered by the chariots, the chariots of salvation. Okay? A great sound of a trumpet is going to say, come up hither. That's what the Holy Scriptures talks about. That hadn't happened yet. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king to them. Okay, and they shall no more serve two, uh, and they shall no more be two nations. Neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. And that's another thing. Where is King David? It's the tabernacle of David that is going to be established, right? So that's what that's the plan. That's how we return to that land. It's a, it's in the Bible. Verse 25 and they shall let's start at 24 and David my servant shall be king over them and they shall all have one shepherd. All right, which is the son of David. Okay? Hamashiach Yahweh and they shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. Now are the, 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 the statues being obeyed over there? No. Absolutely the hell not. One of the biggest alphabet parades happens over there. And they shall dwell in the land which I have given unto Jacob my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt, and they shall dwell therein, even they and their children and their children, children forever, and my servant David shall be prince over them. Okay, because it's going to be the tabernacle of David which is going to be established. That was the promise. And the UN's two-state solution? Well, it never saw the light of day. It's been 70 years. The crisis of this catastrophe continues. And so God not only brought the Jews back to their land, but he sustains them in the land. But as a Gentile, you cannot be the fig tree because that is this, the national privilege of Israel. But as a Gentile, you cannot be the fig tree because that is this, the national privilege of Israel. You hear that? <laughs> he's basically telling you this thing is only for us. But then when we say that, everybody loses their mind. And look at this nigga. But as a Gentile, you cannot be the fig tree because that is this, the national privilege of Israel. When you sail through the book of Revelation, you can clearly see that maybe God restored Israel back physically to their land, but now he has to restore them spiritually also, because yet, I'm saying not yet, because Paul said to the church in Rome, in Romans 11, that eventually all Israel will be saved. But he said... So basically the Lord returned the people over there, but their minds ain't right yet. No, when we return to that land, it, we, we, what's going to be happening? We're going to walk in his ways. We're going to walk in his statues. Ezekiel 37 and 24. And David, my servant, shall be king over them. And they shall all have one shepherd. And they shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statues and do them. 
That's when we re- when we return to the land. That's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be perfect. Again, Michael, the fourth chapter. The other nations are gonna be taught the laws. So you see how these these people. <laughs> This is crazy. Let's get the book of Ezekiel 36. I know brothers were thinking it. Ezekiel 36 and 5. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia, which have appointed my land into their possession with all the joy of their heart, with despiteful minds to cast it out for a prey. Who's Idumia? Edom. Why do you think it made it a point? Because there's other heathen over there as well. There's other heathen who've had control over it. But why do you think it just mentions Idumia? (laughs) Out of everybody. (laughs) Which we just read Isaiah 63. You know, Isaiah's begging for us to be returned to our land. But when you read in this chapter... The the vengeance is is, is is Edom is mentioned. All right, and this is basically what Revelation the nineteenth chapter was quote when Yahweh Shah returns with the angels to take down who Edom and the rest of the heathen that are ruling. So see what's happening with the true Israelites being raised up is that the covering cast over all of the nations is being wiped out. But you have all of these particular uh, Christians jumping up like, oh, hell no. These can't be the people. Look at all these videos. So this dude right here is off, man. Look, at he's all smiles when E is saying they, they, they're the people. But when we say it, all of these questions. That's why these people have to be destroyed, man. This is Isaiah 25 and 7. And he shall destroy in this mountain, all right, the face of covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations, the lies, the pseudoscience. Because here it is. Everybody's all of these different various names as nations, but then he gets a biblical nationality in the form of the J.E.W.s. But everybody else is is black or white or this or that. It's confusion. The Lord is destroying that covering that is cast over all people. And, And who's that covering brought on by? Let's get that in the book of Job. people or something else job 9 and 24 the earth is given into the hand of the wicked he covereth the faces of the judges thereof if not where and who is he now we know he covered the true images of the disciples the messiah the true israelites and he painted over them with uh, iconoclasm all right but he's also covered true judgment with his form of judgments he's cast the judgments of the bible behind his back and covered the faces of the true judges. Now, who, who are the true judges? Psalms 122 and 5. For there are set jo- thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. You see that? The throne of David. All right, which we can go to various scriptures to show you that is the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is a government that's going to be established. So the Lord is 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 destroying all of the lies before he finally swallows up death. Which that's us being delivered into those chariots, man, and given those new bodies. And Paul quotes this in the book of First Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Look at this nigga. Something has to happen first. You know, the time of the Gentiles have to come in. There has to be something. And so, but as a Gentile, you cannot be the victory because that is this 
the national privilege of Israel. But as a Gentile, you cannot be the fig tree because that is this, the national evil. Oh, so I just wanted to go into that and check out this brother's video. You know, this is a very sensitive topic, but uh, hey, the spirit uh, is, is jumping on us to still touch on it, you know, but while the word is still going out. So, and you notice how when that devil said, you know, no heathen or no Gentile can be the fig tree. Did you see this guy make any arguments about that? Absolutely not. But when we say it, or, or or say the, the, the olive tree is only the Israelites or the, the fig tree is only talking about the Israelites. Christians just pop up out of everywhere, you know, trying to disprove it, man. Christianity's finished, man. And openly they're they're siding with the small hats <laughs> through. <laughs> 